So, you've endured and kept up with your assignments and classes this grueling semester, and now the finish line is in sight. Many students would take that as a sign to ease up a bit, take the foot off the gas, and start switching on the brakes. But if you're watching this video, then you should know that that's not the case. You're much smarter than that. You know that the final stretch catches people off guard, and that it's a sign to work even harder. You wouldn't be sitting here listening to me talk about discipline if you didn't want to build up that discipline to carry you over to the finish line. Step 1. Understanding Discipline Before we begin to build up our discipline, we have to actually understand what discipline is. I guarantee you that you don't know what it actually is because our school never really taught us that. Maybe you have a vague idea when your sports coaches emphasize it a lot. Or maybe that you've started working out and that you think smashing a big arduous workout is considered discipline. Or how about sitting down and writing a 650 word personal statement in one sitting? That's discipline, right? Surely that's discipline. It's not. Discipline is the highest form of self-love you can do for yourself. Well, the future you, not the current one. It's benefiting you 6 months from now, 12 months from now, and even 4 years from now. Discipline is about persistence. It's when you do the hard work, even when the times become difficult. When you start making excuses in your mind and your brain is telling you to skip the gym, you tell your brain to shut up and you hit the workout anyways. And as Hamza would say, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. That's discipline. Contrast this to willpower and motivation. Willpower is about the resistance from temptation. Being able to resist doing something when you feel like doing it. You're using willpower to resist the urge to play video games. And lastly, there is motivation which is desire. At a given instance, you feel drawn and almost this sense of craving to do a certain task. And you feel good doing this task when you are motivated. Inside ourselves, we have limited ability for willpower and motivation. You know this because one day, you would feel 100% motivated to complete an assignment. You get the good grades, and you feel great doing it, and you do it without any problems. But then a couple of days later, the motivation fails to materialize and you just can't be bothered to start your work. You try, but you get distracted, you procrastinate by scrolling on your phone, and then you just start doing what, everything under the sun but your task. Now I want you to ask yourself, how do you think world-class athletes and scholars continue to train and hone their craft when they're not motivated? It's because they're disciplined. They go out and train even when they don't feel like it. They persist through the discomfort and snap those limiting beliefs out of existence. I have a secret for you. We can also be disciplined, like those athletes and top performers. Inside of us, we all have discipline. And let me tell you, discipline is a skill. Each one of us have different starting levels of discipline. If you play any forms of sports or you exercise consistently, your discipline will be higher than someone who hasn't even worked out in their life before. But that's okay. Like the nature of any skill, our discipline can be improved through deliberate practice. Deliberate practice means that you are intentionally practicing a skill, knowing that you will get better. A common misconception I see when people say being disciplined means doing a grand, massive, one-time task like running a marathon or hitting a two-hour workout or cranking through an online essay in one sitting. But it's not. It's a thought that we tell ourselves because people we see online, like David Goggins, scale things up and attribute running 20 miles as discipline. For David, it is discipline. But the world-class athletes and high achievers know nothing about us common folks. They've already spent years deliberately practicing their discipline, while us, we haven't even been alive for that long. How do you think they can relate to us? I mean, just look at yourself. You probably haven't even laced up your shoe and began to run consistently yet. How do you think you can be disciplined enough to run a marathon? And yes, I know you are an ambitious person and that you have big goals in mind. Maybe that is running a marathon, or getting straight A's in your school, or attending a top college. Building discipline as a student is how we're gonna achieve all of that. I'll give you another analogy that might resonate better because, well, we all know about video games. So we can just say that there is a level 99 dragon that you must kill as like your final boss. You just started playing the game and you're barely level five because you haven't trained yet. Your discipline skill is barely anything, and if you decide to charge in and fight the dragon now, you're going to get killed. And so what do you do? You train, you level up the various skills, and then finally, 
When you're strong enough to beat that dragon, you challenge it and you win. That's discipline. Discipline is about persisting, being able to set the distractions aside and to work on the tasks that will bring you closer to your goals. Becoming so good at a task that your goal is just, is just become a piece of cake. You want to have good grades and become a top student? Well then you know for sure that you have to not only finish the semester strong, but you have to do it for the rest of your school career. You persist and consistently do well on your assignments no matter what. Someone without discipline might get good grades for a semester, but then the next semester they become too tired or exhausted and then their grade just collapse. If you want to build up discipline, you know you should keep going. Keep working hard no matter what and to close out every semester with the grades that you want. Even when it starts to become difficult or overwhelming for you, you push forward deliberately and intentionally. Now that you know exactly what discipline is and that it is a skill that you can level up, we can start making progress on building up our discipline as a student. Step 2. Your Ego With any skill, you know that you must practice in order to improve. Building up our discipline is not much different and it requires you to do it deliberately. I'll admit it, training your discipline is difficult because it's not a tangible, concrete thing that you can measure or see with your eyes. If you're looking to improve your typing speed, you can track your words per minute, WPM, and see it change over time. It's easy to improve the skill of typing because you can see the numbers go up. But for discipline, there's no such metric that you can see that you're improving, and it's the reason why so many students struggle with having discipline. But as your trusted older brother, I'm here to tell you that leveling up your discipline is easy. And if you follow what I say, I can show you that in fact, you can train your discipline. And there is a metric that you can even measure and to easily see your progress over time. The number one thing that is destroying the progress you are making with your discipline is your ego. I've been in the education system for 15 years now, and the reason the mass majority of students that I've seen struggle with getting good grades is that they have shit discipline. By simply knowing the concept and how we can build up our discipline, it will change the trajectory of your life as a student, but also after your education, when you're going on with your professional careers. However, the one thing that you must know is that the number one enemy for your discipline is your ego and it must be destroyed in order for us to become more disciplined. Inside of us, there is a voice, aka your ego, and on multiple occasions, it will tell you that you are above doing a certain task. They will begin to make excuses or to tell you to simply not do something. And maybe it's so inconsequential, it's outside of your norm, and it's how you've grown up, but they're all excuses. They're all excuses you're feeding into your mind and you listen to it without any judgment. You don't stop to judge or criticize your brain, you trust it so much because, yeah, you think you know your brain knows what's best for you. Yeah, just keep on procrastinating and, you know, scroll on TikTok. Keep watching those useless brain-numbing content and see where your brain takes you. Yeah. These tasks that will train your discipline are so simple. They're like borderline mindless and they're gems of opportunities, but we just don't do them. We don't do them because we don't feel like it or this or that. Tell me, do you make your bed every morning? Do you take out the trash without being told to? Do you voluntarily clean your room? Or do you wait until your parents have to literally fuss and tell you to clean it up? I recently started believing this idea of excellence in all areas. And I think this mindset of how you do one thing is how you do everything is very important. And it applies to us as students. Yes, you are a student. Whether you're in middle school, high school, or college, you're a student. But guess what? You're also a teenager. You're a human being with responsibilities. There is a whole world out there besides school. You have to eat, you need to sleep, and you need to have a roof over your head. No one has probably ever told you this, but the things you do outside of the classroom, how you dress, how you act, how you take care of yourself, and your environment, and your room, translates 100% to the classroom and you as a student. Because the truth is, even if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, you will have to face the real world. Some of us will face it sooner than others, but it's always best to start taking responsibility early. And that's how the top sits at the top, and how some people will live their lives in mediocrity and never to really reach their full potential. We go about our days quite literally with thousands of these micro tasks that will allow us to improve our discipline, but we don't do it. Why do you think that is? Why is it that we don't make sure that 
our backpack is clean and not full of junk before we go to school? Why is it that we don't prepare everything we need, the pen, the paper, the pencils, the night before? Why is it that we still have plastic water bottles, trash, and useless shit just laying around our desks while we work? All those things I just mentioned are opportunities to practice your discipline. And the sad truth is, some people will never do them. Maybe it's because you've had overbearing parents who look after you. These mothers who think that they're doing you a service by making sure your bag is packed. They'll tell you to just focus on your studies and they'll clean your room. They'll clean your desk and even the bathroom. So you don't have to and you just gotta focus on your studies. But guess what? When you go off to college and your parents are no longer living with you, that's when everything goes wrong. I've heard countless and numerous terrible stories about college roommates that they don't take out their trash, they leave their food out, there's a rat problem. All that just stems from poor discipline. And you don't even realize the consequences until it's too late. And for some, these people go about their lives without even seeing the problem. They continue to show up late miss deadlines, overcommit, and most of you guys I know will just click off and continue to live in mediocrity and question why you aren't happy and why you're still living this life completely unfulfilled. But who am I to tell you so differently? I'm mainly making this video for the younger versions of myself, the 15 year old me who wanted to be successful so that his parents doesn't need to work anymore, but he didn't really know or understand how he could be consistent. He was miserable all the time, and this is the exact video that he needed to start making progress in his life. If I knew what I know now, as like a 15 year old back then, my life would be like 10 times better and much more different than where I am now. It's all because my discipline would have been better. I would have quit video games much sooner, and I would have given up the instant pleasures and delayed gratification. This is it. Get rid of your ego and know that you have been lazy. You've been cutting corners in all areas of your life, up until this point because you had an ego. You let those empty plastic water bottles be littered everywhere around the house. Even when your parents constantly remind you again and again and again to throw them out, you don't. You just let them turn out everywhere. Your room is filthy, messy, there's trash overflowing in the bins, and you don't even have like two minutes to pick it up and throw it away. When you wake up in the morning and you don't even make your bed, how can you expect yourself to be successful? when your bed is not even made. Why do you think people in the military make their beds? You probably heard it multiple times that success starts by making your bed. How do you expect yourself to drive change into the world when you can't even change the status of that messy bed? Destroy that ego and we'll start building our discipline from the ground up. Step three, stack the blocks. The surefire way to build our discipline as a student is by intentionally doing tasks that will require us to be disciplined. Luckily, that's fairly simple because quite literally, every task around you will require you some level of discipline. Again, as a reminder, starting off, the tasks that will train your discipline are not these massive grand ones that you have in your mind right now. There are these minor tasks that our ego and our laziness has conditioned us to not to do. I want you to take a look around you and see what you've been neglecting. Is it your bed? Is your room messy? Are there plastic water bottles laying around? Or do you have clothes randomly just on the floor? Is your trash bin overflowing? Is your work area messy and decluttered? All of those things require discipline. And before you get ahead of yourself, I want you to only choose three simple tasks to start off with. These tasks should not take more than a couple minutes to complete. And the tasks that you choose to do, you will do them with the intention of doing them for the rest of your life. I will repeat this again. These tasks that you choose to do you will commit to doing for the rest of your life. This is important because, like I said before, persistence is discipline. Even when I'm turning 80 years old, guess what? I'm still gonna be making my bed. Well, to the best of my ability, if like my back is still like fine. If I can go back in time and to talk to my younger self, I just tell him to shut up and start making my bed and to take out the trash so it's never 100% full and to clean my desk area every night before I even go to bed. Those three simple tasks will have numerous and compounding effects into all areas of my life. These are going to be your commitments for the rest of your life. Make your bed every single morning when you wake up for the rest of your life. Clean up your work area every day for the rest of your life. Take out the trash so it's never full for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. 
These three tasks are so universal that you can do them. And you should do them with the mindset that you'll do it for the rest of your life. Now, to make sure that you can visibly see your progress and to see that you're on track to do them every day, you will make and use a habit tracker. Doesn't matter if it's digital or if it's on pen and paper, I personally will recommend using pen and paper and to just stick it on your wall so that it serves as like a constant reminder for you to do the tasks. I still have one right now which is like sitting on the corner of my wall right here. And so with this habit tracker, you should make it monthly. And once a task is complete, you just go ahead and check it off. And you do it for the entire month and see how many times you've been able to do it. And I want you to keep this in mind. In the beginning, you will face resistance when doing these tasks. And yes, it will feel a little bit weird and awkward, but that's what you're supposed to feel. You haven't made your bed in 10 years, and now you have. So of course it's gonna feel like you're doing something wrong. But you should stick to it and commit to it. After a month of consistently checking off the habits, you'll even start doing the habits without even checking the habits off. It just becomes somewhat of like an autopilot thing. And as you continue to see those check marks get checked, those tasks getting done, your discipline is going up. You can think of it as almost like a game where one check would mean like one experience point for your discipline skill. You will miss days, I promise, in the beginning. But remember what I told you, these tasks are meant to be done for the rest of your life. So ingrain that in your head. If you miss one day, that's okay, it's fine. Reflect on why you missed it and just keep going the next day. You have to see yourself being able to be that person who does and makes their bed every single morning, no matter what. Something that I did in the beginning was like, when I missed a day, I would tell myself like, you idiot, like how dare you miss a day? How could you be so undisciplined? And so I would just like be mad at myself. And then the next day, I just, I just won't forget to do it. And then you can see it as even a game too. Each month you will try and beat the previous month's total check marks. And over time, once you start doing consistently for a whole month, every single day it's checked off, that's when you know that you've been very consistent, you've been disciplined, you've been building it up. And so now you can start taking on more habits and more things that will build up your discipline. And that, my friends, is how you build up your discipline. With these multiple repetitive discipline needing tasks, it will compound into other areas of your life. Making sure that your desk is always cleaned you'll start becoming less distracted while you're working. And there's a clean space that you can work on. And so you'll be more focused. And now you're starting to see improvements in your grades. Wow, that's crazy. There's a trash bin that's never full and you can just always throw your trash in it. Your parents see that and wow, it makes them so happy. And now they're in a better mood. And guess what? They're gonna start letting you go out more and do whatever you want because you've proven that you take the responsibility for your life. These simple micro tasks will compound and then three months, four months, six months, 12 months from now, your performance as a student, your room, your work ethic, your life will become almost unrecognizable. Everything has changed for the better because you've been leveling up your discipline. You understood what it took. You struggled in the beginning, but you told yourself that you will stick to them for the rest of your life. And that's good to have. You stand up straighter now. Your self image is improved and you start seeing yourself as this disciplined person who always has a clean room. You start seeing visible and clear progress in all areas of your life. That's an amazing feeling. You find your work more fulfilling and you start even working on something more meaningful. Maybe that's a business. And the people around you, well, they're gonna start thinking like, wow, this person has his life together. That's crazy. They'll start treating you differently. And who knows, you might even start attracting someone who you like. This is what it takes to build discipline as a student. And by mastering discipline, you will wake up one day and see that, wow, like I've became successful or wow, I've made it to the top 1%. There's a famous quote that I like, and it says, we all suffer from either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret and disappointment. Internalize that and take action today.